Hi everyone, Stockmo here. Today's video is for entertainment purposes only, and we're seeing the Fed come out yesterday, give us some news. It seemed like it was kind of good news. Uh, for the most part, the markets reacted nicely, and we've seen a little push up. When I'm making this video, the pre-markets were pushed up a little bit. But is there some trouble brewing? And I'm telling you, there is the debt ceiling. They are playing with this like a political football down in DC, and it could come back to haunt the stock market pretty severely. And I have a feeling that once we get through this debt ceiling standoff, we're gonna see a big push up. And I'm gonna tell you where money flows when there is a standoff and how bad the markets can get based on prior results. So you're gonna to wanna to watch this. But before we get into it, you're gonna to wanna to hit that like and subscribe button and take advantage of the Moo Moo link I have down below. You will see this right now. You get up to a 100, well, you'll deposit $100 or more and you get a free share of Lucid right now, which is worth over 20 something dollars. You get another free share between three and 350 50, and if you put two grand or more in, you get an additional share of GM giving you like 70 to, I don't even know, a lot of money worth of free stocks. And that's what it's all about. Depends what the random number generator gives you for that three to 350. So take advantage of that. And then of course, come on over and join me at the Patreon. We have the, the link down below. You will see, we have a private discord, with thousands of members. You can see my portfolios, what I'm buying and selling all that good stuff. So when we get into the S&P 500, I wanted to pull this out. A lot of people are saying, look, hey, the market, you know, it's been running hot. You can see it running up. But you notice everything was, if you did a regression line, it's a pretty straight regression line. We're looking at a pretty solid last six months. All of a sudden, though, we got into September. And the talk of debt ceilings and that being used as a tool to try to derail the infrastructure bill, all the spending, that was the out, and you're seeing a lot of discussions out there about this, and you're gonna see a lot more by the end of September. And that is when the Fed will need to start coming up with some different alternative ways to make the bills get paid. And I think that'll last into the middle to the end of October, then they run out of money. And then it has to be revolve around how much tax money they're bringing in to pay the bills they can pay with that. And some bills are gonna go unpaid. And we have seen this happen before. And we, I'm gonna show you some of this. But right now, I'm looking at the market, and I'm thinking, what was the big catalyst for this? And that is about when we started to hear the talk that that was gonna be, I like to say that the debt ceiling was not just gonna be easily passed. And, and that became a very big issue. And we get into it. And we can see uh, from a poll, I've been looking, thinking, how is this going to play out? How serious are they down in D.C. about not passing it? And so they came out and uh, McConnell and Schumer have used the word catastrophic to describe the fallout from the default. Uh, so both of them agree that this is absolutely a must pass situation. But do they mean it is a must pass situation? Or will they dig their ground and argue it's the other side's fault like we usually see in D.C.? And that's what I think is going to happen because I think the Republicans basically have no way to stop the Democrats because they have the House, the Senate, and the presidency. And so the only tool right now is that debt ceiling. And the debt ceiling is what they're, I think they're going to dig in and just use this. And so I'm watching this very closely because I remember 2011. 2011 was the last time we had a very, I wouldn't say the, the last time, but we had something in 2013 as well, but the big major effect on the stock market, we had a downgrading of United States debt. It was bad, and I remember it. And we saw a big downturn in the, in the market, which I'm gonna show you here. But before we get into that, I was thinking, would they be willing to use this to try to stop the infrastructure bill. And then they came out with a poll uh, lately, uh, the September 18th to 20 morning consult poll showed that 42% of registered voters would blame both parties equally for any default. Okay, we know there's gonna be a certain percentage that does that, with 33% blaming Democrats and only 16% blaming Republicans. The thought I see behind this is that, well, they control all three, and so they could pass it if they want to pass it. And so the Republicans are going to say, look, you can have the debt ceiling, you can have the infrastructure bill this year, and just take care of it because you can do budget reconciliation. But you can't do both. You can only do one. And so they're making them choose. And, and so I'm not quite sure how this is going to play out, but I can tell you one thing. 
if they do not pass the debt ceiling and this gets pushed down the road, there are things that are affected for every American. This is an old article I found out there. I thought it'd be nice to read, even though it's from 2013, four ways a debt ceiling crisis could affect you. I'm gonna go over them quick. Your nest egg, the stock market gets hammered. If you have 401ks, HSAs, and you got money invested in the market, it's gonna get hit, it's gonna get hit hard, all right? And then of course, as we go down, um, and you can see this one just talking about 2000, uh, right here, 2011, from one month, July 7th to August 8th, during that big argument back in 2011, the stock market dropped 17%. I want you to think about that. In 30 days, 17%. It took six months to get all that back. Uh, and of course, I said by August, which was about a month afterwards, they were still down 9%. It took another five months to get all that back. So it takes a long time. Secondly, your job, we could go into a major recession. If the market's dropping, money's not being, the bills aren't getting paid. We had a downgrading of debt back then. It was bad. And then of course, a lot of uh, the jobs can be lost and that could be affected your loans. And you can read about this right here. And then of course you got the safety net. And this is a big one. If you get Social Security, know somebody on Social Security and think, no, there's no way it would be affected. They would always pay that. Well, they can't pull money out of thin air. And this is the thing. Even back then, Treasury Secretary raised uh, the specter of not paying those on time if Congress didn't raise the debt ceiling. And that was back in 2013. So nothing's changed. If you don't raise the debt ceiling, they don't have the money to do what they need to do. Some of these things could be pushed down the road. So there's a lot of, uh, I'd say, anxiety out there dealing with this debt ceiling standoff. I'm watching it, but it raises the question, Mo, if you think this might happen, where could you move money to try to actually make money? And on top of that, where could you move money to avoid having the, the, the market drop off if you thought it was gonna? I thought it'd be neat to show you this chart, which goes over the 2011, 2013 crisis of the debt ceiling and how everything kind of panned out overall, all right? And so I explained the market, but use it, US equities altogether down 2%. In 2013 though, we actually saw it go up. And then an international equities got crushed. Everything, it was bad. Like I said, you always say, United States sneezes, everyone catches a cold. This is, is very true. It, no one's gonna be excluded. But where did money flow for both of these? So you see a debt, size, uh, debt ceiling crisis coming up. Where did the money flow? Find some similarities. And that's where you see the one to three year treasuries. Both money uh, went in there and you can see they both increased 10 year treasuries. They increased 4% for 10-year treasuries, 1.3% gain. Uh, and then in 2013, this was back in 2011. And then of course, you can see the US aggregate bond index, 1.6 for 2011, 1.3 for 2013. And I think what we saw was a flight to safety in terms of bonds, money flying to the one to three year treasuries, the 10-year treasuries, the US aggregate bond index, money flew to them in both of these debt ceiling issues. Now, some people out there will argue, and I've seen reports, I don't follow DC too closely. I don't make a lot of videos on it, as you know. I usually just stick to my stocks, but this is a big one. And everybody always wants to know ahead of time where I think the next positive or negative catalyst is going for the overall stock market. This debt ceiling standoff to me is something we cannot ignore. This is gonna have an effect on the stock market. How serious? I don't know, we gotta see how it all plays out down there. So how bad is it getting out there? Take a look at this article. Yellen appeals to Wall Street CEOs for help with debt ceiling. Now they're going to Wall Street, trying to get the CEOs to use their power to convince the Senate to go ahead and get this thing passed. And then you think, well, nah, it's just, you know, what is that, Mo? Well, not only that, they're pulling out six former Treasury secretaries, urge Congress to move swiftly on debt ceiling, these articles are both from today. And then I read some articles over the last couple of weeks here discussing what they thought would happen, and it wasn't all positive. They know that this could be a major standoff. You have McConnell down there saying, hey, we're standing our ground. And now you're seeing today's, I should say yesterday's articles speaking about the CEOs being asked to help, old treasury secretaries being asked to help, and they're pulling out everything. And McConnell says, we're gonna stand our ground. And so this is to me not saying, hey, this might be something small, they'll figure it out. I don't know if they're gonna. 
And one thing the market does not like is uncertainty. And so even though we saw, like I said, the stock market have a few green days in a row, I think uh, two days in a row now after that big sell-off, I think we'll see as we get closer to the end of September, which we're getting there, I think you, just, you know, be, might be a little bit of sideways up one day, down one day, but if something bad happens and they can't figure this out, payments start to get mix, missed, you will start to see the market suffer like we saw back in 2011. I was reading some articles out there speaking that they thought this would be very contentious and this could lead to some struggles in DC. Now, how will that affect the overall stock market? Each time is independent of the old time. I showed you 2011, I showed you 2013. 2011, we know the market got hammered. Came back rather quickly, within six months all the money was made back. And in 2013, it actually was okay because the market was already on the men. Uh, and then, but one thing we saw in common, the bonds raised in both times. Like I said though, we'll have to wait and see how this all plays out. Right now, uh, it could be solved rather quickly, but I have a feeling it's not gonna be. So this is my update for today. Hopefully the market stay green. We've seen a lot of buying out there because uh, to me, the growth stocks are at a very, very deep discount. And for the long run, they're gonna do well. Even if we do have some issues with this, I would see it limited for some of these growth stocks, but quickly recovering after it was resolved, which I do believe it will be resolved sometime in October. That is my estimate. I do not believe this will be resolved before then. And uh, as we go into October, every day into October we go, I believe it'll have more and more uh, negative effect on the stock market. But once it is resolved, I do believe we'll start to see the stock market enjoy that fourth quarter I keep talking about and seeing a nice run up. And that is what I am thinking is going to happen. And so I'm coming up with my strategies for this. You can come over to the Patreon link down below, see what we're gonna do. We have the private Discord where we're discussing this stuff and hopefully it's worth your time and I appreciate the support. Now, if you haven't done it yet, hit the link down below the video over to Moomoo. Moo. You get a free share of Lucid for depositing 100 or more, another share between $3 and 350. And if you deposit 2000 or more, you get an additional share of GM after you leave that in there for 30 days. You gotta leave the two grand in there and average two grand for 30 days. Then you get the free share. So I know some people are asking about that for the GM stock. Uh, after what else have we got going on? You do have a link to BlockFi down below. Get up to 250 in free Bitcoin and get the credit card. It's giving you 3.5% back for 90 days on Bitcoin. I think it goes to 1.9 after that. Then you can get interest on top of your Bitcoin, which I'm doing. I'm loving it. And then a Coinbase where I buy most of my crypto, I'm, I'm staking my Ethereum. That link is down below and you can get some free crypto just for free Bitcoin actually, just for doing the sign up email verification and ID verification. They have lessons in there then that you can get some free crypto. I have like 50 to $100 in free crypto for doing that. It's awesome. I highly recommend it. And then like I said, come on over and join us at the Patreon. That's all I got for you today. Let's get out there and make some money.